Hi there, good day, I hope you're well and safe. Again, this is Sir Kiko and welcome to Ethics 101. In today's lecture video, we will talk about rules and moral standards. This lesson also aims to emphasize the importance of rules to social beings and to differentiate rules that are based on moral standards and non-moral standards. So if you're ready, please grab a pen and paper and take some notes as you listen to the lecture. There would come a point in time where we, as humans, would question the existence of rules. Maybe this is due to the fact that some rules, or even many of them, would restrict the way that we move and exercise our freedom. This lesson, however, aims to clarify why we need rules in the society and why we cannot do away with these. First, let's talk about what rules exactly are. Rules refer to explicit or understood regulations or principles governing conduct within a specific activity or sphere. They tell us what is allowed and what is not allowed in a particular context or situations. Rules therefore give us a concrete basis for the possible benefits or consequences of our actions. They provide peace and order in any group, may it be within the family or within an entire community. In many ways, therefore, rules serve as the foundation for any healthy society. Rules benefit social beings in various manners. First, rules protect social beings by regulating behavior. Second, they help guarantee each person certain rights and freedom. Third, they produce a sense of justice among social beings. And finally, rules are essential for a healthy economic system. Let's talk about these points one by one. Rules protect social beings by regulating behavior. It builds boundaries that place limits on behavior. Take, for instance, this photo. Imagine roads without traffic lights and signs that would guide how we should behave. It would be very chaotic. Rules are coupled with means to impose consequences on those who violate them and to give benefits on those who adhere to them. People follow these established rules to avoid negative consequences and to reap the positive outcomes. Going back to our previous example, because of the rules of traffic, it is easier for us to travel from one place to another. Second, rules help guarantee each person certain rights and freedom. Rules form the framework for societies. Nations are generally nations of laws and governing principles are outlined in what is called the Constitution. This Constitution guarantees the rights and upholds the liberty of its citizens. Rules on divisions of power, as well as checks and balances, for instance, aim to protect individual liberty. Third, rules produce a sense of justice among social beings. It prevents exploitation and domination. Rules are necessary to prevent the strong from dominating the weak. They facilitate a system that provides justice in a society wherein even the richest and most powerful have limitations on what they can do. And fourth, Rules are essential for a healthy economic system. It ensures that power would not be centralized around monopolies and threaten the strength and competitiveness of the system. Without rules, a country may experience an extreme divide between social classes. Rules also ensure the safety of the products and the employees. It also helps monitor the quality of services offered. For instance, we have copyright and patents that help protect people's intellectual property. We can therefore say that the society indeed needs rules to protect the greater good and to uphold the common welfare. Even the freest forms of human communities necessitate rules and regulations to function soundly and to prevent the exploitation and tyranny. While rules are often based on concepts of morality, 
one would realize that not all rules are moral rules. This also means that not all standards are moral standards. In the next section, we would quickly review what morality is and then discuss about the difference of moral and non-moral standards. Morality may refer to the standards that a person or a group has about what is right and wrong. Moral standards, on the other hand, are those which are concerned with or relating to human behavior, especially the distinction between good and bad, or what we consider to be right and wrong behavior. While rules give the society a general guide to what its citizens can and cannot do, moral standards provide individuals a compass which helps them discern the rightness or wrongness of their actions. One may be surprised to find that many of what we consider as normal, if not necessary, standards are in fact non-moral standards and hence lack ethical sense. These non-moral standards include various rules within our homes, in games, in fashion, in etiquette, and even in religions, traditions, and constitutions. Whereas moral standards would be rules that people have about the kinds of actions that we believe are morally right and wrong. Non-moral standards would be some of the rules that we have in the community that are not at all related to ethical considerations. Technically, religious and traditional rules as well as legal statutes are based on non-moral principles, though they can be ethically relevant depending on some factors and considerations. To help you further differentiate between moral standards and non-moral standards, consider the following characteristics. Moral standards involve serious wrongs or significant benefits. Moral standards deal with matters which can seriously impact, that is, injure or benefit human beings. For example, rape is not only illegal but also considered immoral because it can seriously affect the life of the victim. However, this is not the case with many of the non-moral standards that we have in the society. For example, a person who chooses to wear what others may consider as revealing or weird cannot be judged as immoral because his or her actions do not necessarily affect his or her well-being. Moral standards also ought to be preferred to other values. These standards take precedence over other considerations, including personal, cultural, and even legal ones. Consider the given examples of Professor de Guzman. An artist or a person may be aesthetically justified in leaving his family in order to devote his life to painting. But morally, all things considered, he is not justified. Second, when a particular law becomes seriously immoral, it may be the people's moral duty to even exercise civil disobedience. Another characteristic that distinguishes moral standards from non-moral standards would be the fact that these standards are not established by authority figures. Moral standards are not invented. They are not formed or generated by authoritative bodies or persons such as nations' legislative bodies. Moral standards thus do not depend on any laws. Instead, these ought to be the basis of laws. Thus, its validity does not depend on any constitution, but lies on the soundness or adequacy of the reasons that are considered to support and justify them. Lex Luper gives us a very good example of why we cannot use laws as a basis for moral standards. The Holocaust was legal. Slavery was legal. Segregation was legal. All of these practices were made into laws, and they have all caused abuse to human rights. If we use a state as a metric for ethics, in the words of Lex Luper, we'll all end up disappointed. Moral standards also have the trait of universalizability. 
This principle can be summed up by the golden rule, which states that one must do unto others as he or she would expect others to do unto them. Moral principles are expected to be applicable to all those who are relevantly in similar situation, or if one judges that an act, A, as morally right for a certain person, P, then it is morally right for anybody to relevantly similar to P. This means that a given standard should be applicable to everyone who is in the same situation for it to be considered moral. Killing is considered to be immoral because we cannot apply the trait of universalizability to the act of murdering a person for no reason at all, or even for a reason which may not be ethically justifiable. Universalizability is therefore an extension of the principle of consistency, that is, one ought to be consistent about one's value judgment. This also means that we cannot have biases when we apply moral standards. Moral standards are also based on impartial considerations. Morality does not evaluate standards on the basis of interests of a certain person or group, but one that goes beyond personal interest to a universal standpoint in which each person's interests are impartially counted as equal. Impartiality is usually de depicted as being free of bias or prejudice. Impartiality of morality therefore requires us to give equal and adequate considerations to the interests of all parties concerned. Moral standards are also associated with special emotions and vocabulary. They are put forth as injunctions or imperatives, and these principles are proposed for use to advise and to influence actions. This feature enables each individual to evaluate or to reflect on his or her own behavior as well as that of others. It also assigns praise or blame and causes the person to feel satisfaction or guilt. Given these characteristics, we would realize that many of the laws or rules that we follow in the society may not be even based on ethical grounds. While following rules is indeed necessary to ensure peace and to maintain order in the society, one must remember that our greatest obligation is to adhere to standards of morality. Therefore, if there are certain rules that we find oppressive, we should be brave enough to question them and if we can, change them. For while it is true that rules serve as the foundation of the society, moral standards serve as the pillars of humanity. Again, thank you for joining the class today, and I hope that you have taken a lesson or two from this lecture video. Have a great day.